Hello and welcome to Honest Faith Conversations. As always, I am your co-host, Miguel Covarrubias. And I'm Kathy Covarrubias. And today is going to be a little bit different. We're not going to be talking about um, a specific um, series or movie or episode of any kind. We're going to be more talking about current events, specifically what happened yesterday. Um, the reason why is because we do this uh, here on a Sunday and we do that kind of in our own kind of way of trying to be in communion with, you know, our, our brother and our, our, those who are religious, who are, are spiritual. And, um, and I think it's, it's something that we needed to, we needed to take a moment and really talk about in our own way, because we are sort of a religious podcast. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, it, what happened yesterday uh, in this in our country in the United States of America? It was a little devastating to to a lot of people, and and so I think it it bears talking about. And so we're going to talk about uh, what happened in Charlottesville yesterday, and uh, you know, so this will be a shorter podcast, but we're going to be talking about that, and uh, we're also going to be talking about uh, what we have coming up for the weeks to come. Mm-hmm. So this will be sort of a, a bad news, good news sort of thing. Yeah, we're, we'll try to end it on a happy note so yeah. nobody's too depressed. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, there's, that's what's coming up. And uh, so we invite you to come and join this conversation with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think that this, this really should be talked about in all religious communities today. Because this is what happened yesterday. And... It very much is a part of our religious lives as religious mm-hmm. as spiritual people, and if it's not talked about in your religious community today, you really need to talk about it in your religious community. Now bring it up yourself if nobody's talking about it. Exactly, because it needs to be talked about. It needs to be brought to the attention. We can't just keep ignoring this. And that's that's precisely why we decided to to take a break from our pop culture talk to talk about current events today. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to bring this up. Very first, very first thing that I want to talk about with Charlottesville is that I I'm a firm believer that God loves everyone, no exceptions. That God loves even David Duke. God loves the people who are on the white supremacist side. God loves those who are counter protesting. That I really feel that we tend to lose sight of that in these times is that no matter which side which side you are on, you tend to lose sight that these are human beings on both sides. Mm-hmm. And God being, you know, as we see him as our creator, as our father, and we, his children, he's very disappointed. And, <laughs> Yeah, and especially in those who take violence against each other. Mm-hmm. And in in my own concept of God, I do believe that God, as a parent, uh, is really, it, it pains God when we hurt each other. Mm-hmm. That, you know, when we hurt his creation or her creation. Um, their creation. Their creation, its creation. <laughs> um I, I when I was in in college, I used to get uh, points taken off of my uh, paper every time I used a the uh, gender pronoun for God. So I, I try very hard now to make sure that I say God instead of a pronoun, a gender mm-hmm. pronoun. So, uh, but I I I really we really need to take light of this. That the gospel is that God loves everyone regardless. That God wants to be in communion with everyone regardless, and that. Um, you know, this is, this is a horrible thing that happened yesterday. I do not agree with the the white supremacists at all. I don't think that any, any human being should be over another one. Mm -hmm. That we are, we are, as, uh, Abraham Lincoln put it, we are all created equal. Or or is that the, uh, the Declaration of Independence? One of those two. It's one of the American (laughs) things. Uh, but... Yes, Thomas Jefferson. It's the Declaration of Independence uh, or the Constitution. One of the it's one of the writings. It's it's written down somewhere. It's written down <laughs> somewhere. Uh, sorry, I didn't prepare for that. But uh, <laughs> um, is 
is we are all created equal, but we all have differences, that we are all skilled in different ways, that we are all human beings, that we are all part of this human race, that we are all we are all in this together. And when we have a system that is set up to be biased towards one race, that is an evil Mm -hmm. in our society. That is, you know, we'll talk about privilege here in just a second, but that. When one race is pri- is privileged above another, and we've talked about this before on our podcast with other shows with Get Out especially, mm-hmm. is that it is it is a privileged system. It is a privileged society. And I mean, th- yesterday is a prime example of that. And the fact that they came out with symbols of hu- with symbols of hate, with torches yes. and and things that were symbols of the KKK, symbols that they surrounded a church. Of all places, with these symbols, these symbols of hate, a church which is supposed to be a symbol of love and acceptance and kindness to all. And unfortunately, the church has become very not that symbol anymore. Mm-hmm. But but still, it should be that symbol. It should be a symbol of love and acceptance. And they surrounded it with a symbol of hate. And, and they're doing this in a privileged society where they can get away with this. Mm-hmm. Because I can, I mean, just... Just take a step back for a minute. Imagine if Black Lives Matter matters. Uh, uh, if that if that group had surrounded a church with torches, mm-hmm. I mean, all of them would be arrested. There would be there would have been violence the moment they stepped out the door with torches. Yeah, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Is that in our system in our society we have this double standard that's set up that only only white people are allowed to 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 use these symbols of hate and they're only they are allowed to be able to protest the their their somewhat uh you know injustices their perceived yeah, injustices in their society perceived, yeah um and let's and let's just say it's it's just flat out racist i don't care I, you can call it whatever you want it, but I'm going to call it what, is it what it is. It's racist. It's filled with hatred. Hatred. Like, unadulterated hatred towards somebody and towards a group that has no control over their skin tone, for goodness sake. Like, yeah. like that, that just boggles my mind. That's like hating somebody for being short. Exactly. It's... it's- you you don't have choice over that. It's genetics, mm-hmm. and the thing is, is that we we've gone through several millennia now as human beings. We've gone through we've gone through countless generations of people, and we still are arguing over these little petty differences. We're still thinking that one one uh, defining characteristic should be should rule over everyone else who has a different defining characteristic that's i mean no that's terrorism that is not just racism that's terrorism Mm -hmm. when one when one defining characterism that you cannot choose whatsoever is is that thing that you that is supposedly making you lesser of a of a human being that should make you fear for your own life and it does Mm-hmm. I can't count like for instance with with me I feel like, like I've said before is that that I'm half Mexican and I feel that I feel that since my skin is white I I probably don't have the right to say the injustices or the the fear that I have because of things like my even my name my name is Miguel as is that that in itself is is something that I didn't choose my parents chose for me but I, I claim it with pride because of, because of the meaning of it, and and the fact that I'm I'm terrified to even put that on my resume and terrified that people will judge me because of it. That in itself is terrorism. That is that is defining of that is when you instill terror in somebody else to to be any to you know not be themselves. I'm sorry. I I just. I find it hard to, to, to find the words for this because it is such a, uh, such a big issue that hits close to home for me that. Well, it, it seriously is. 
it is mind boggling to, to us, to people who have been born with a certain amount of privilege. Like I, and I think it's so important to acknowledge our privilege. For example, like I am white. I was born to a middle class family. Sure, my family fluctuated between like middle, middle class and lower middle class. And, you know, there were times where it was really, really tough and I had to really rely on my on myself and on my family in order to get through. But on the sole fact that I am white and have do have a middle class background, that gives me a certain amount of privilege. Mm hmm. But then I also have a little a little bit of a disadvantage as well, too, since I am a woman. And it is harder for women to advance in careers. It's getting better, but it's not there yet. Um, heck, I mean, um, I am still, in terms of, like, in terms of wages, just speaking overall, like, somebody in my position who is a woman is getting paid less than somebody in her position who is a man who has the same amount of experience. And not just that, race also plays a factor mm -hmm. into that. Yep. Is that, yep. I mean, whereas women make, what is it, 78 cents to the dollar mm -hmm. that, it, that men it make? It drops when they are a woman of color. Yeah. Uh, like, it's something insane, like 40 cents. Mm -hmm. And... I think this this plays into it is that when when you deny that there is a problem in this country, that is really when we begin to fail. Is that when we've shut off conversation, when we've shut off discussion about these matters, that's when we begin to fail as a country. And I think this is this very much goes to, and I've, I've brought this this piece of media up before, is that that one scene from Doctor Who is that you know once. Once you stop, you're going to have to do what you had to do all along, which is sit down at the table and talk mm -hmm. to each other. And this is this is the same thing here is that that, um, you know, the white supremacists, the alt right. And I'm sorry, I I can't call them alt right because they are what they are. They are they're white supremacists mm -hmm. and uh, they they want to be, you know, privileged as they were before. And no. You're shutting off the conversation. You're saying that that this race is should be superior and you're not you're not even taking any consideration into the other fact that this is you were lucky. Yeah. You were lucky to be born with your skin color. You were lucky to be born into privilege. And honestly, you need to sit down and take a good hard look at that. If you think that that in if it makes you anything other than just that lucky. And what really, what really upsets me is when people get upset about things such as like affirmative action. Yeah. Still to this day, even though we have that into law work, you know, um, universities are trying harder to make sure that their student um, uh, population is diverse. Employers are also making sure that they're they are hiring as equally as they possibly can, they're looking more on the skill set versus, um, you know, heritage. We still can't ignore the fact that people of um, minority backgrounds have to work twice as hard to get the same job as somebody who is white. Exactly. And that's, that's a problem. Twice as hard. Twice as hard. And to do anything, twice as hard to do anything, to make any accomplishment that a, a person, the person who was born lucky into privilege, into being white, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, that's calling it like it is. We, this is a problem. This is something that we need to talk about. Something that we as a country need to talk about. This is why we decided we needed to to take some time to actually talk about this on our podcast, because no, we're not a political podcast, but we are a religious podcast. Um, you know, even though that we're somewhat religious and we're only, you know, on the fringes of pop culture and religion is that, you know, we're really, 
in religion, this is something that communities need to talk about. It's because it's the same thing that happens in churches. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the, the bishops who have become bishops and people who are bishops of color, people who are bishops, women bishops, people who are gay, lesbian, transgender, uh, all of these different things. There are so many debates on whether or not to ordain them when they're human beings. They're the same as everybody else. And that's that's the thing is that, you know, it's across the board. We need to talk about this is that um, William Barber, who is who is a bishop, he had to work twice as hard to get to that position mm -hmm. as some of the others. And uh, even the the cur the last two presiding bishops for the Episcopal Church, both of them. Catherine Jefferson Shorey had to work twice as hard to get to be a bishop as, as even the presiding bishop as all of her peers. Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, Bishop Michael Curry, because he is a black man, he had to work twice as hard to get to the position that he's at. And this is something that, that not just in, in, in religious societies, but also in pop culture. We talked about this in Get Out, is that mm -hmm. that that uh, movies uh, with people, with actors of color yep. have to work twice as hard to get the audience, to get the praise that it deserves. Yep. That for some reason that they have to prove themselves as a, a good artist. And I, I mean, we have been working really, really hard to try to call out Hollywood on their whitewashing. Um, it's, it's slowly getting there, not as where it should be, but I think that with big hit movies too, also with featuring women mm -hmm. as the leads are also helping as well, because let's face it, Hollywood was all just like the, a boys game. Yeah, it was, it was. And the only way for women to actually get good roles um, well, there's something called a casting couch. <laughs> yeah. And that, that is a, that's a fact. Women had to do that in order to try to get a part, even a bit part in a movie. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so with all that being said, that's, you know, some of our take on what happened yesterday. Um, I know that there is a lot to disseminate with that. There is a lot to really look at, especially with uh, the car driving into the counter protest and with the woman being killed. Uh, with that and everybody else that was injured. And then there were people who were killed in the fights. And, uh, you know, this, there's a lot to disseminate. There's a lot to talk about. Um, but we are not the podcast to do that. No, but we do encourage you to speak out. If you see somebody or hear somebody supporting the white supremacists, speak out. Call them out on it. Give and and be intelligent about it. Like, don't just if you just name call, it's not going to go anywhere. Exactly. You need to engage them. I know it's going to be hard, but the best way to turn somebody around is to engage them in honest conversation. Get ask them why they feel this way. Exactly. You know, draw it out of them and teach them that there's actually a different way. Yeah, that's that's why we that's why we do the show is that we want to talk about these things. We want to bring them up, and they're important because they're icons of our culture. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so we we wanted to bring this up because I think this is a prime example of of that is that you need to talk about these things. You need to bring them up in conversations with each other, uh, with everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to be in conversation with each other. And with that being said, let's talk about where we're going to be in conversation in the next few weeks. Yes. So, yes. to end this episode on a happy note. Talking about Wonder Woman, that's something that you guys will be looking forward to, I hope. Um, we, next week, yeah. Yep, next week we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman. Um, so, if you guys have seen it already and you, like, want us to talk, like, focus on, like, a specific point, like, about the movie that you liked or you didn't like, um, that kind of sparked... Um, some imagination or creativity in you, like let us know. Or a morality thing that you yeah. found in the in the movie. Yeah, you know, bring it up, and uh, we're going to talk about how to do that here at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, the week after that, we are going to be talking about Spider Man Homecoming. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, again, uh, if you find anything in that movie, or if you you've seen it and and you really want to talk about a certain thing, uh, then you know, give us feedback because yep. we we would love that. Yep. Um, and, uh, then the last bit, uh, we are currently working our way through American Gods. 
Uh, we're probably about midway through mm-hmm. uh, season one because um, I know that there's probably going to be a season two. I have, I think there I've is, already yeah. read the book uh, or listened to the book rather a few times, and uh, you know it's it's actually I really enjoy the book. Uh, but uh, you know. So there's going to be – I'm going to have a lot to say about the difference between a uh, visual representation and the book. Yes. Uh, but um, – Well, we should say that like um, – as always, you know, spoiler warnings with all of these. And just for the little bit um, that we've seen out of American Gods, um, if you find that the sex scenes in Game of Thrones um, offend you, I definitely would not watch American Gods. Yeah, it's like stars <laughs> wanted to one up HBO. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, but you know, considering that uh, the book is sort of graphic in the sex scenes as well, I think they're they're trying to stay as true as they can to the book. Um, yeah. But so, I mean, as as an avid Game of Thrones fan, um, like sex scenes usually don't like make me uncomfortable, but in American Gods, it. There was a couple of times I was like, okay, I'm done now. You can stop with the sex scene. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, in closing, uh, how you can respond to any of these bits that are coming up here is you can give us feedback by leaving us a voicemail at 720-372-3879. Uh, you can uh, find us on social media. Uh, we are on Twitter mm-hmm. at Real Honest Faith. We are on Facebook uh, facebook.com backslash real honest faith we are on tumblr we are on patreon but i don't know that anybody uses the social media features on patreon we're on <laughs> tumblr we're on reddit uh um yeah so we are oh, our own website yeah we're on the website you can check us out at the honest uh yeah and so you can find my book on there as well uh, talk about how the church is uh kind of kicked me a few times and mm-hmm. uh and so we, we've talked about that before in the show but uh, you can check that out on there as well uh if you wanted to get a preview of the book um on the website there's actually the first chapter is on the website so if you want to read that to see if it's worth a purchase which i think it is um <laughs> um you know you can read it there um just as a little preview uh, for the next, uh, I think two weeks is when I'm going to put up the next chapter and then I will take down the first chapter. So chapter two will be up there here in a few weeks. But um, then, uh, yeah, with all that being said, we invite you to come and join the conversation. Bye-bye. <laughs>